Thanks a lot, Marlies, and very well welcome to our and to tonight's speakers and to all the participants already joining us. Welcome to the new event of the series Listen to the East by the Catholic Academy in Berlin, Renovabis, and the Committee of Lay Catholics in Germany. Today, we will focus on the topic temporary home refugees from Ukraine in Poland and Moldova. However, I already, in, um, in the very beginning, want to mention that, of course, during the discussion, um, it will be more than welcome if, in fact, some of you of the participants join us from other, especially Eastern European countries. Of course, it would be much appreciated also to hear your perspective on tonight's topic. Um, so we want to both, well, we want to take on the challenge to both deepen and to broaden our specter and um, to get an insight into the social, political and the humanitarian situation. Um, we would like to, well, maybe also hear about some perspectives for the two contexts. Um, but, and of course, we will, we, will, we will have concrete experience and expertise from two local partners who already are with us. Maria Klamann joining us from Sopot and Lilia Bulat joining us from, from Moldova. Um, we will have two inputs. I will, I, will, um, I will introduce them both in a second. We will start with Poland and then finish with Moldova um, and then enter into um, a discussion with all of you participants later on. Um, the whole event will last about one hour. Maybe we can stretch a bit depending on your appetite um, and questions. Um, so with no time to lose, I will now give you some information about our two distinguished guests of tonight. As I said, we will start with Poland. So first, I would like to give a warm welcome to Maria Klamann. Maria is the spokeswoman of the local government movement Yes Pak for Poland. Um, it's um, it's an initiative that started, I think, in um, 2019 in Gdansk and then was formally founded, um, officially founded in August 2020. Um, you might want to mention why that is of significance. Or, um, and, um, well, the main task is actually to strengthen and enhance self-government of local governments in Poland but also to strengthen the cooperation with other, other municipalities, voivodeships and other local governments. And as I understood also with civil society. Um, and I will stop here because everything else you can say much better. Warm welcome, Maria. Welcome, thank you. Before I give the floor to you, I would first also like to give a very warm welcome to Julia Bullard who's joining us from all. Oh, we're gonna... Uh, Marie, du bist gerade uh, stumm. Uh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is it now? Okay. Yeah, it's... Thanks, thanks for mentioning it in on time. Thank you. Um, yeah, exactly. Very warm welcome to Miss Lilia Bullard joining us from Moldova, um, chairwoman of the Moldovan Christian Aid Society, founded in 2007, a non-governmental ecumenical association aiming to assist, as I understood, a very broad spectrum of people in need through social welfare and development cooperation projects in Moldova, and also advocating for the interests and rights and needs of marginalized people in Moldova. Very warm welcome to, Lul to you. Thank you. And with this, as mentioned, I will already stop speaking and give the floor to Maria Klamann for your input from Poland. Thank you, Marie. Uh, thank you. And hi, everybody. Uh, before I tell you my story, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me and share with you uh, about um, Ukraine refugees in uh, in Poland. For me, it is very, very important because I was um, uh, I was involved in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning of that uh, crucial, uh, that that uh, dramatic and uh, uh, war, 
uh, helping uh, as a volunteer, uh, helping uh, people who came here to support to different countries, uh, the different cities in uh, in Poland to to find some help and to to rescue themselves. Uh, so uh, it was very moving for for me that time that 20 24 of february last um, last uh, last uh, last year uh, also in poland it was very touching uh, because it uh, it that war uh, happened next to us and we are very uh, similar we have similar culture with the with uh, with ukrainian and also we have that uh, not the best story, uh, history uh, connecting with uh, with Russia. Uh, so um, for all of uh, uh, Polish people, it was uh, uh, knowing from first first hour that all uh, all c- civil society will help um, refugees from Ukraine and also the local government uh, do this from the first uh, first uh, first hour um, but uh, before i tell you and i start to speak about the ukraine refugee i would like to tell you something about the political content, context of refugee policy in poland because uh, and let me oh i will show you the Presentation, okay, to help me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so first, um, because we cannot, no, we cannot speak in Poland about refugee policy without speaking also about what is happening on Polish Belarusian border, because uh, you see here two pictures uh one of the uh, uh, two of those are very sad but i think one of them is more sadness and more drastic because uh, uh, from two years we have not the same because not so many refugees from syria uh try to get to poland and to east, uh, to to the west through the polish belarusian border uh, but it is still uh, it is still uh, some people um, and they they didn't get any help from our country uh, also from uh, um, uh, from west uh, western countries so um, a few months ago Polish government built that wall on the Belarusian, Polish Belarusian border. So I, I would like to tell you and remind you about this because uh, media and also people forget that there are still people in the forest who also need some uh, some help, some refugees, because they also go uh, run from the from the war in their countries. So uh, that's why uh, for me it was important to to show you uh, what kind of uh, uh refugee politics we we we, we got uh, but um, going to what our country can do and our uh, uh our uh, citizens can do uh, for refugee uh, refugees from ukraine we do really 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 a lot uh, and you can see this on this picture that uh, this is the the border in Polish Ukrainian. Then uh, Polish soldiers and Polish people help uh, help to get to cross the uh, to, to cross the border. What is more, uh, from from my point of view, is very important that um, we are here after the war, but we still not have any uh, national migration policy so uh, i will tell you ab- uh, uh, also about what we do what what we do for refugees in poland uh, and how uh, how they doing now in poland but also i would like to share with you some um, some systematic issue which should be resolved in poland but they are uh, still not uh, so as uh, as marie say oh I cannot go further. Once again, sorry. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, as Marie say, I, I'm uh, from the organized uh, non-governmental organization which collects, uh, which um, and uh, where are many, many, uh, almost seven seven hundred local governors from different countries. So, for us, from the beginning, was uh, was uh, was very important to help refugees, but daily helping, yes, but also to give some systematic uh, um, resolutions and some systematic uh, solutions for uh, for uh, for re refugees in Poland. And we, as uh, our organization, as local governments, uh, we push on government to uh, to sign something like uh, something like to to discuss and sign the uh, migration policy, and that's why we organized the round table in Wroclaw uh, with uh, with the local governors, uh, govern uh, local governors, but also with uh, non non governmental organization, scientists, academics, also uh, and also with the government uh, representatives. And uh, thanks to this, we uh, we do oh. I don't know how to, one second, maybe you can, oh yes, that's one. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, we wrote together, white, uh, our organization wrote together a uh, white paper, uh, which is the book uh, when we give the recommendation. And, uh, and some of them, uh, are taken by the local government uh, to uh, to the not to the migrant policy because we have still don't have migrant policy, but some of the recommendation our ministry uh, Agnieszka Ścigaj, who is uh, um, who is engaged to uh, to do integrate uh, integration in uh, Polish and Ukrainian integration, uh, they. They take some uh, some uh, some um, uh, some uh, 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 some things from uh, from these uh, white papers, but there is a lot and lot to uh, to do with that. So go to going to the uh, to the to the, to the uh, February and March last year in Poland, you can see that every. Uh, every city was very solidarity with uh, with uh, uh, with ref uh, Ukrainians and with Ukrainian refugees, uh, and they show the solidarity uh, also in the symbolic way like this. Uh, but to tell you um, who came to Poland from Ukraine, uh, because you have to know that we in Ukraine have. Uh, Two kinds of groups of Ukraine, Ukrainian. First, first one, first group is the woman who joined their, their husband and parents who lived in Poland before 24 February 2022. Uh, because their families, their husband came here to work and uh, earn some money and give that money to uh, to uh, to family in uh, in Ukraine. And and the second group, uh, the biggest one, is all uh, is of course refugees. So this is uh, mainly women with children and older people uh, who came after 20, uh, 24th February two thousand twenty two, and they have no support here from their husband, from their parent. They are they are here alone, and they. Uh, mainly live in collective residence centers. Uh, in the beginning of the war, they also for few, uh, two, three months, uh, in, uh, in in sometimes four months in hotels. For example, in Sopot, we are, uh, we are, uh, we are a very touristic place. So we get, we get many hotels. So that refugees uh, refugees live there, or what was very very incredible, uh, mm, uh, a lot of people uh, Polish people give uh, refugees their own homes and they live together in their homes through, I think almost ten month, uh, ten month, and uh, what is very important that uh, four hundred. Uh, more than 400,000 uh, 
of refugees are children. So this is uh, this is um, uh, the this is fifty uh, percent of uh, are in Polish school. There are uh, there are there there are there take Polish education, but uh, the half of them they still uh, conduct uh, online learn uh, online lessons by Ukrainian system of education. Um, how many refugees are in Poland? This is uh, this is numbers from. Uh, March, April, and May in this uh, uh, last uh, last year. So we can guess that now in Poland there is three, um, for sure, three um, more than three million um, millions of of people. And wait, uh, where they? Oh well. Oh. Uh, and in Poland. Um, Refugees now live uh, mainly in biggest city, in metropolitan city, like Gdańsk, Sopot, uh, Gdynia, like Warsaw. There is the uh, there is almost uh, uh, almost five uh, five thousand uh, five hundred thousand uh, refugees. Also in Krakow, in Wrocław, there is very very big amount of refugees. Also Szczecin, Poznań. Uh, but uh, and uh, I think the most important uh, cities was in the beginning was Lublin, Rzeszów. This is uh, on the uh, east uh, of Poland, Rzeszów, Lublin, and also small cities next to the border uh, were uh, give the uh, residence center uh, and shelters for uh, for refugees uh, in first uh, in first moment uh, and what we do uh, what we do uh, local governments do uh, uh, we try to also relocate people to smaller cities uh, so in Pomeranian in in the uh, in the north of Poland it is really happening that uh, in some small villages people are also also there uh, now the biggest, uh, the biggest, the largest relocation hub for Ukrainian youth refugee in Europe is in uh, it is uh, it is in Warsaw, and there is um, um, there is still five uh, five thousand people uh, accommodating today, uh, but they host in all seventy five thousand of people. And that kind of uh, that kind of uh, places in Poland was really really many. Mm, support for Ukrainian refugees in Poland. If we wondering uh, who helps, to, who was helping to refugees in Poland, we can say all. Uh, in the beginning, for sure, it was citizens, civil society. It was a non-governmental organization. It was also business and small business. It is very interesting in Poland because uh, uh, business wasn't so involved in social life. So now it was something uh, uh, something new happened. Of course, local government. So city halls, uh, they uh, they do really really uh, great job. They also uh, they also bring um, give some trans transport for the border and take uh, take people to, from uh, from Rzeszów to Sopot or to uh, to Szczecin or, or to Wrocław without waiting for the government uh, government help. Government was, uh, I think, a little bit late um, because they uh, they was uh, in small chaos, let's say, and also local government and uh, NGOs were are more connected together and they are better organized. So we can uh, we can collaborate, we can uh, contact um, and do that uh, all help together in all the all Poland uh, but what uh, what the government uh, do for sure is social welfare because uh, um, refugees in Poland Ukrainian refugees get the uh, benefits uh, the same as Polish people and uh, also try to establish the um, try to establish the law the law it is not the best, but it is it is happening. 
uh, to say you about um, what kind of um, what kind of help it was uh, uh, given to uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees, we can say almost all. You can see here that was also accommodation. Uh, uh, it was uh, organization of uh, relocation points on the border and also information port in this uh, in the cities when when refugees came by trains to the cities uh, you know on the north on the on the south and they go with wait uh, they didn't know where where they go uh, so uh, they was really really also afraid to to get uh, uh, to get to some places with where they did did know and also they can get some hurt because we we also say about uh, hurt about the smuggling uh, refugees um, and, and kidnapping kids uh, it was also happening uh, also what we what the local, local government do it was it is organized hot food for people uh, also organized free public transport in Poland for the first month uh, every refugee can uh, can use free public transport and um, also um, mm, also support in getting in, uh, a job support to give the uh, lessons uh, english lessons give the uh, psychological first aid and so on and so on. give clothes give all humanitarian uh, humanitarian uh, help uh, to show Hello. you Mm -hmm. Just to, I'm so sorry to jump in. Just with regards to time, we like. I mean, I, I, I would, of course, I will let you finish. Just, I would just jump in as a small I reminder. Just, okay, I just tell you about two two, two things. Uh, so uh, this is the what 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 uh, what do uh, what we do in support exactly. In the first uh, day, uh, we open. Uh, 24 hours a day Ukraine support center um, and it it was initial period of operation it was reception point so we give the uh, give uh, shelter for 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 people give them food and so on so on and now it is still uh, conducting and organ it is now more integration center uh, also still uh, people who wants uh, who needs uh, uh, medicines, who needs to see the doctor, who needs to see psychologists, who needs to get some uh, job advice and have the uh, English lesson, they can get to our Ukrainian uh, support uh, center and get this. Uh, this is uh, what we what we what we give uh, in that center and in support. And um, one very important thing, it is what we do in Sopat, but also in different cities. Uh, we try to build community uh, together with Ukrainians um, and to connect Polish people and Ukrainian people. And we organized first, uh, uh, first in April, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Easter, the Easter, and also uh, Christmas Day together. It was together Christmas Day. What was together uh, for Polish and uh, and Ukrainian people. And in Sopot, we met in seven hundred, uh, seven to eight hundred people uh, all together. Uh, I don't say about the. Uh, this is. The different kind of support, what you see, the humanitarian aid for uh, for the, our for for cities in Ukraine, what we do, also, uh, and and this is maybe one uh, almost the last one which I would like to say you. This is the baobab in Lublin. This is uh, Lublin was very very. It is very very great city with the very very great non governmental organization, and uh, there is uh, organization Homo Faber. Then they uh, help uh, migrants from and Ukrainians from long 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 time ago. And uh, the the their mission is to get people together to so they uh, now they have very big place uh, 
center in this in the center of Lublin to integration to exchanging experience to implement projects to uh, to to give some space to meet together uh, uh, for uh, Ukrainian people and for for Polish uh, Polish people. Uh, I can skip this and tell you about in discussion, but I would like to tell you what we have the what's uh, what is the challenge now for Poland uh, when we speak about the uh, refugee crisis. For sure, and first, it is uh, that it is integration. So we are wondering how to engage Ukrainian refugees in social life because they live, you know, in a dormitory in some in in houses. Uh, but they are not uh, not so uh, open to get together in uh, uh, you know in uh, in city events or something like that. Uh, second one is uh, migrant policy. It's some kind of standards of migrant policy in Polish national migrant policy. Uh, next one is work for sure because uh, uh, um, Ukrainians really wants to work they start work uh, uh, they start work in the beginning but now in the autumn from the autumn they would like to they are very uh, engaged in uh, looking for the job but only 20 of 20 percent of ukrainian people work in their professions so for sure this is this and also also crimes we didn't say that it's allowed because we don't want to uh, uh, this, uh, we, we don't want to disinformation and fake news, and uh, we don't want to give that information to uh, to give some reason to hate speech and so on. But what we see and the police uh, police say that they have uh, research that more of we have more crimes in Poland, uh, more uh, thief. And they uh, and unfortunately that that thieves are are uh, also taken by uh, by Ukrainian refugees because they have no uh, no money to uh, to live. And also the last one for Poland, it is something uh, wi wider. It is um, it is economic economic help for Ukrainian and. Uh, we also, as a local government, try to help Ukrainian uh, to connect with European Union and to 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 um, to prepare Ukrainian Union to uh, to prepare uh, Ukrainian to uh, to get uh, to get access to European Union. Okay, so sorry for for that, but there is a lot lot of things to. Yes. There, there is. Thank you so much. Quite dense in, indeed. I hope we will have the time to, to dive a little deeper. I will not give you all my 1,000 questions I already have, but rather directly hand over to, to Lilia Bulat um, and ask you to, um, to give us your presentation from Moldova. Yeah, thank you. Thank a lot. you so much. Yeah, thank you a lot. Good evening, dear participants. It's my pleasure to participate in this online event. Thank you a lot for the invitation and for the opportunity to present information from Moldova perspective. Okay, so this is my presentation for today. Please, next slide. slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, so immediately after the um, start of the um, war in Ukraine, in Moldova government, announced an emergency situation in Moldova and uh, in the beginning of March apply for the uh, uh, for the part, uh, candidate status uh, EU candidate status country uh, generally we experience in Moldova several crises uh, linked to pandemic of covid and gas crisis crisis and uh, challenge of negotiation with Russia maybe you had that uh, Moldova was dependent 100 percent of uh, gas. Uh, gas are coming from Russia, so it has a big influence over the economical and political situation in the country. Uh, fuel prices increased uh, seven times since last year. Uh, 
then we have now experience a, a, a hybrid war expressed in a huge propaganda and organized protest where the participants are paid for the participation. Uh, so according to UNHCR data, uh, till the end of January this year, about 780,000 Ukrainians had crossed into the country. And actually about uh, 107,000 uh, Ukrainians stay in Moldova. Uh, out of this number, about 50,000 are children under age 18. Next slide, please. So you see the Moldova map. Moldova is located between Ukraine and Romania, so we have only two neighbors. Uh, the blue ones are crossing points between uh, Moldova and uh, Ukraine and Romania. And the yellow ones are crossing points between Transnistria and Ukraine. You know the Transnistrian region is still uh, a separate one, which is under uh, uh, influence of uh, Russia. Uh, therefore, um, those yellow points are closed for the moment. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, since the beginning of the war, Ukrainian citizens were allowed to, uh, uh, were provided with a facilitated regime to, of entry uh, in, into the country. So uh, only one document, uh, even expired one, uh, could be presented on the cross, crossing border. Um, we have uh, uh, in the in 2022 uh, uh, refugees coming to Moldova how to apply for the asylum in the, in the case they would like to stay longer in Moldova and have a more protected uh, uh, statute uh, here. But recently, next slide, please. Recently, on January 18, 2023, our government approved the law. Uh, about the um, providing a temporary protection statute uh, for the uh, refugees coming to Moldova. They will receive an identity card for one year for free of charge, which could be uh, operated or data could be uh, registered in M-Connect information system. Uh, then they will have uh, more protection and more uh, rights uh, to execute uh, being here in Moldova. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, Cash-based initiative. Since uh, May uh, 2022, here in Moldova, UNHCR provides um, cash assistance to the refugees throughout the payments to the cards. They uh, distribute uh, throughout the um, refugee registration centers. They distribute their cards, uh, cards, and uh, monthly transfer amount, which is equal to about uh, 120 US dollars for the unconditional use. So most uh, of uh, refugees use this amount for the food. Uh, of course, you nature also cooperate with the local uh, NGOs, and sometimes local NGOs also provide um, vouchers to the uh, some food and hygiene stores. So refugees could use those uh, uh, vouchers and uh, get some goods from, from them. Next slide, please. Uh, accommodation. Majority of the Ukrainian refugees live in private accommodation here in Moldova. Because of the uh, common uh, Soviet Union experience, there are a lot of the mixed families in Moldova. Or uh, there are many uh, Ukrainians who have uh, family members or relatives, friends living here in Moldova. So also for them it's uh, easier to come to Moldova because uh, of the language. So. Uh, many Moldovans since, uh, still uh, speaks Russian, and there are a lot of the Russian media here in Moldova. Um, starting from the beginning of the invasion to Ukraine, there were opened 132 authorized temporary placement centers. For the moment, only 71 are active in the country. Uh, uh, Authorized temporary placement centers were opened uh, by different structures, 
This could be local government, local public administration like mayoralty, could be um, church, could be NGO, uh, could be a business establishment uh, for the uh, opening of this authorized temporary placement center. Our government have elaborated a kind of uh, reg uh, regulation which uh, uh, include the minimum standards for the uh, uh, opening such a temporary placement center for the Ukrainian refugees. Um, uh, this number I reflect only the official number, but there are also a lot of the centers which were not authorized or didn't apply for authorization uh, for the government. Those who applied uh, have um, to prove uh, the existence of the minimum standards, and instead they have uh, they could benefit from the repayment of the costs. So in the families, majority of the 95 persons of those who are coming to Moldova, refugees, Ukrainian refugees, they live in the hosting families or uh, in the rented apartment. Uh, uh, since May 2022, also in Moldova, World Food Program provides some financial support to the hosting families who are providing accommodation for more than two refugees. So amount could vary depending on the each uh, um, uh, particular situation of the hosting family. Next slide, please. So here I uh, included several figures from this uh, regulation for the opening the authorized temporary placement center. So minimum capacity should, should be 20 places, minimum personnel employed nine per person, uh, this is the hotline for the refugees. They could uh, apply and ask uh, for the accommodation available. Uh, and these are costs for which are um, included in the uh, regulation for the authorized centers who uh, which could be repaid by the uh, from the state budget or from the budget which is allocated for the um, uh, for the covering the refugee crisis so if you will uh, divide these amounts into uh, 20 20 is actual um, exchange rate between um, euro and uh, moldovan lei one euro is about 20 moldovan leis then you will have the amounts in lei which uh, not so high. And all also, uh, which is quite important, all utilities cost of those centers, they are covered according to the invoices from the suppliers. Next slide, please. Yeah, so here you, uh, you see the map of the, in which places are uh, mostly refugees are accommodated in. So the blue, darkest blue are the most populated uh, coming to the white blues, which has less, uh, where the uh, refugees are concentrated less. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. Employment, employment. Uh, there is a hotline opened by the National Employment Agency, which is opened uh, during uh, between uh, from Monday to Friday between eight and uh, four p.m. Uh, well, only few uh, Ukrainian refugees uh, declared that they are officially employment employed despite of the fact that uh, our employment agency announced uh, more than 2,200 uh, vacancies available. Um, so between the, among the main, uh, main barriers to employment uh, are language barrier because even the uh, communication language could be uh, Russian, but uh, the many document uh, documentations are done in Romanian language, so which is uh, not known by by the Ukrainian uh, refugees. And also, uh, as you probably know, um, men of active age are not allowed to leave Ukraine due to the mobilization, and mostly women and children are coming uh, into the country. And the women, uh, in order to be employed, have to ensure that uh, there is um, a child care options for, for the children to whom they come to, to Moldova. And such uh, options, unfortunately, are not so many. So practically for the women, 
there is not so many uh, job opportunities um, uh, for in the country. Also, some of Ukrainians hesitate to stay for a longer time in Moldova because they said that do, they don't uh, feel really safe here because of the Transnistrian region. In the beginning of uh, 2000, uh, of, uh, of the war, in 2022, in April, May, there were different um, fake news which were spread among the social networks uh, about the plans of the Russian to come to Moldova in a few days and uh, celebrate first they were celebrating of the Eastern here, and then they were going to celebrate the Victory Day on May 9 here in Moldova. So many uh, local population also was under panic and leave the country. Okay, next slide, please. Education. So many uh, children would like to, or many parents of Ukrainian children would like their children to continue study mm -hmm. in Ukrainian uh, language and according to Ukrainian curriculum. So they try to be connected throughout different online school systems as these uh, online systems were developed during the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, those who uh, uh, cannot such an option, they uh, go to the Russian groups of the local schools. The, but uh, of course, there are some language barriers in, in the case that uh, schools are providing lessons only in, in Romanian. So not in all the uh, 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 communities, you could find also Russian uh, study in the schools. Uh, they also mostly formally enroll and they cannot earn some class credits because of the uh, language barriers. So just they attend the lessons. Uh, next slide, please. Also here, it is, sorry, it's it's me again, just also yes, remind time. you. Yes. Okay, yeah, I try to be fast. <laughs> uh, well, public service, health services are free only for the emergency care and for some pregnancy related services. All other uh, services uh, or services for the more um, uh, particular um, uh, challenges uh, needs are quite uh, uh, quite few. So they are mostly for, for some intervention or uh, for some uh, people who, with some chronic diseases they have to address to their paid uh, clinics. Next one, please. Gender-based violence and trafficking. Of course, our authorities try to follow and prevent uh, these cases, but still some were reported uh, as a high number of the Ukrainians are placed in the private houses, in the hosting families. It's really difficult to, uh, there is no uh, practical tools about the report of such a cases. Uh, next, next slide, please. National planning. So I tried to find a national plan of response. I didn't found a separate document. I just found it in a regional response plan. So if you will access UNHCR regional response plan for the next year, for 2000, for this year, <laughs> for 2023, then you will go to Moldova section and you will see the, uh, the respective planning. Next one, please. Data collection. Many uh, NGOs and international organizations which are active in Moldova, they um, try to, from the very first day, to collect the data about different needs and uh, different problems. But mostly they uh, um, could ask about those who are located in some uh, temporary shelter centers but not those who are allocated in the family. So we still have to um, uh, develop mechanism how to reach uh, the people who are living in the hosting families in order to get more uh, comprehensive information about the needs and the problems. Next one, please. Coordination. From the very, very beginning, coordination in Moldova was really well organized because of participation and taking clinic of the international organization who are present here in Moldova. Uh, UNHCR, uh, UNICEF, World Health Organization, UNDP, UN Women, uh, uh, refugee, in, refugee uh, inter, International Organization for Migration, 
they all uh, and also local ministries, ministries of the labor and social protection, ministries of the healthcare, ministry of internal affairs, they were quite active in participation and coordination of the response to the refugees. Next one. So here you see a kind of um, platform for coordination. Uh, all the platform is uh, supervised by the government of the Republic of Moldova. There were, and there are some uh, hubs or working groups under the uh, sectors of intervention. You, sh you could uh, notice protection, logistics, um, health and food, education, social inclusion, accommodation, gender, uh, technical assistance and other working group which are included in which uh, uh, um, which working group is coordinated by the uh, relevant ministry or international NGO. Next one, please. So I highly uh, recommend you to access the uh, operational data port portal of UNHCR. So you see the address in the top, in the address line, and then you could uh, found by country Moldova, and here you find all the information updated uh, about the situation of the refugees here, and also many of the reports available. So this is the uh, screen um, uh, of uh, the uh, of um, five ma ma March five. So you see the how one uh, hundred seven thousand are here. How many have crossed? Uh, who are which are the sectors uh, or priority sectors of intervention? Which are the working groups? Some uh, more reports and uh, minutes of the working groups are also placed. And also, if there are available um, studies or researches on refugee situation, you also could find them here. Next slide, please. Since the very, very beginning, there was created a um, volunteer um, group called Moldova for Peace. Uh, it was uh, uh, supported by the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Many people who mobilized themselves by bringing food, as some collecting some goods for the refugees, they were registered here at platform as uh, as volunteers of uh, Moldova for Peace um, uh, working group. Next slide, please. We have uh, several uh, hotlines. One was uh, is administrated by the UNHCR. In the first month in March, there was the highest number of the appeals of the calls registered. Then we have, for also in the beginning of the invasion in in uh, March, we have the our government uh, open and the official channel of information prima source. Uh, it is first source in Telegram, and also they have opened a, um, a web page called dapamogagov.md for the only information for the refugees who are coming to Moldova. Next slide, please. So you see the screen uh, with uh, this web page. It's uh, elaborated, as you see, in Ukrainian and Russian languages. Then all the hotlines, information about the accommodation, how to get the asylum uh, centers for the refugees, uh, and uh, all other useful information for the uh, self-help groups, uh, food, and other. Thank you. The next one. Uh, when we already have a past one year since the um, start of the war, there was a need to update the information. And um, uh, La Strada have recently presented, just in the begin in the end of February, a report uh, called uh, "Mapping of Existing Services for the Refugees in Moldova." It's a quite comprehensive one. Uh, unfortunately, it is available only in Romanian on La Strada Moldova web page, but still you could uh, use some uh, translators if you need to uh, catch some information from. The next one. The next slide, please. Also, you could uh, find the uh, refugee response plan. This is a regional response plans, which I have mentioned to you uh, in the beginning. So one for 22 and uh, next day for 23. Uh, and you could uh, find the, the departments uh, for Moldova and uh, see some uh, information. Next slide, please. Here the information from the this response plan for this year, how many target population, how many host population, and also age and gender breakdown. Next slide. 
uh, some strategic objectives. So all they are related now for the uh, issues related uh, to the integration of the refugees to Moldova. Because we, for the moment, we have a stable set, more or less stable situation with the refugees. The number of the, those people who decided to stay for a longer time in Moldova keeps uh, more or less the same level, about uh, 100,000. Uh, daily inflow and outflow, outflow of the refugees to Moldova are equal to the 10,000 people. So the same more or less number are coming and uh, leaving the country daily. Next slide. So those are the financial requirements so you all could find in the documents that I have shown the two slides before, yearly, the next one. And some conclusions that I could uh, voice. Of course, there are a lot of the support was coming from the international agencies and local NGOs who started uh, activities of support since the very, very beginning of the invasion and the coming to the refugees. Uh, the great support was the coordination and creation of those solidarity platforms. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, thank you a lot for your uh, attention and uh, we're looking for the questions. Absolutely, thank you so much, Ms. Bulat. Um, well, that was both, there was lots of information to take in from both of you. Quite impressive. The one thing that strikes me as as a parallel is um, that in both countries um, that we now heard from, there has been a quite impressive and very ad hoc response, both from governments and from society, um, which has, well, apparently done great, great, great work um, for one year now. Um, However, I would like to ask the two of you, maybe start with Ms. Bulat this time first. Um, at least in Germany, I also um, during one trip I, 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 I undertook um, with Renovavis and the NZTK to Przemysl um, last autumn, it was quite acute, the fear of the winter that was that was starting to come. Um, at, the at the same time, the war in Ukraine focusing more and more on civil infrastructure. So people were quite afraid that they would not be able to uphold this impressive level of, um, of ad hoc help by, well, by volunteers. Um, and, and then maybe people would not be able to, to provide all that help anymore. Now, fortunately, winter is coming to an end. And I heard from both of you um, a couple of times you mentioned the aspect of integration. So I have the feeling that now we are at a point in time where the ad hoc help for just providing, well, the basic needs is turning into the next step or the next phase where the question is, will people stay? Will people leave? At the same time, the winter, well, seems to be over. So with all this in mind, I would like to hear from both of you. So what is the situation right now um in also the atmosphere and the well what, what is um do you do you feel that people still have the strength to actually enter into this new phase now or will this now become the new problem uh, maybe maybe Lilia Bula do you want to start yeah, so there were some prognosis that uh, in the winter time there will be more refugees coming from Ukraine. Uh, for the uh, winter period, also because of the uh, some attacks uh, on energetic system in Ukraine, which were uh, have been uh, was uh, has place in, in had place in in the late of uh, 2022, but uh, fortunately those prognoses were not um, uh, they were not coming to the real reality. So we, as I told you, we are monitoring the the influx on the uh, refugees from Ukraine and. And the same um, level of the refugees are already who decided to stay in Moldova stay also for the uh, during the winter time. Um, local population received some uh, support for the winter um, uh, heating means. A lot of the um, uh, rural population 
uh, still are not connected to the gas, so they have to heat the houses with the coal and the firewood. Uh, many of the local people were afraid of the high prices, uh, because as I told you that uh, we are, were 100 percent dependent on the Russian gas. And just in the beginning of the um, heating season, Russians uh, Gazprom announced that they will cut the supply to Moldova to 30 percent. And we have only one electricity producing uh, station which are located in Transnistria. And uh, we, in order to get the electricity, we have to uh, pay them or transfer this amount that we got from Russia. We have the, we have the whole amount to transfer to the, uh, the electricity producing station in Transnistria. So practically Moldova uh, survived this winter due to the um, uh, supplying of gas from other countries, mostly from uh, Romania. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Ukrainian refugees are trying to get their accommodation. Many of them are good uh, employment unofficially. Uh, they try to organize among them the child care and also some local governments, local militias try to provide them such opportunities uh, for the child care in order to provide them opportunities to earn for, uh, earn for living in Moldova. Um, yeah, so. so so what is the atmosphere? Do you do you have the feeling that there's a shift also in the maybe the welcoming response? Also, I know what, um, that, that Moldova was one of the countries where uh, quite quickly the as it as it is often called the humanitarian circus um, jumped into the country. So many also small initiatives, small NGOs. Yeah, in, whatever yeah, they thought was needed. In, in the first time, still there? Is it, the, is it still, what's the atmosphere? Yeah, in the first uh, month of the uh, start of the war in Ukraine, uh, I mentioned the panic among the local population because immediately the high number of people who were crossing the country, the all the stocks in the stores which were located close to, to the uh, border points were sold out and also the same was for the fuel. And also our cash machines were not working anymore because uh, Ukrainians were coming and withdrawing the cash because they go further to other countries. And so many locals were panicked. And all, but from one side, from the other side, there was a huge response from the local population who were um, receiving refugees in their own homes and providing temporary accommodation for them. Uh, a lot of the people were uh, collecting the goods. They have everything: blankets, uh, clothes, uh, food, uh, everything, and were um, uh, carry, uh, um, uh, submitting this uh, these uh, collections to the uh, centers for the refugees. Uh, since that time, this kind of um, the huge mobilization of the local population who are collecting the goods, of course, already uh, gone down. Uh, there were uh, many um, attempts through the different social media of the fake news telling that, uh, well, uh, also because of the uh, huge uh, number of people coming from Ukraine, local people could experience some lax in, in food or other supplies. Um, this uh, fortunately not happened. Uh, just some imports that were previously done from, uh, from Ukraine now are reduced. For example, there were some imports of the medications, uh, salt, uh, some other goods, but they are, we don't feel the, the shortage for the moment. Uh, people are still open to receive the Ukrainian refugees, despite of the Russian propaganda that we still uh, have a presence. We live in uh, in stress, <laughs> in panic. Uh, every time we expect some new events, uh, between, be, because the situation is unpredictable. Uh, in um, uh, uh, spring last year, there was some explosion in Transnistria near to the weapon storage in uh, in Kabasna. In Kabasna, there is a huge storage of the Russian equipment, and about uh, two thousand uh, Russian soldiers uh, who are. Uh, uh, stay close to this equipment. Equipment which was uh, withdrawn uh, by the Russian troops from the Eastern Europe, they still have a lot here. 
even it's already maybe old, not so modern, but anyhow, it's dangerous for the for the people. So uh, this factor is is a factor of risk for the many people, uh, including local uh, Moldovans and and the refugees. And um, every day uh, for last uh, two weeks, we have organized the protest in the center of the Kishinev who are demonstrated against our pro-European government and approaching to the EU. It's a pro-socialist and pro-Russian oriented parties uh, who just pay participants for, for, for the participation. So it's a kind of... Also, they, uh, this summer we experienced more, uh, many um, hacker attacks uh, for, for all our um, governmental institutions. And every every day we were receiving the emails about the uh, bombs in our airport. So we have a kind of hybrid war here in Moldova. So situation is not simple. <laughs> yeah, people Indeed, still... So it's, yeah, so yeah. There's, there's still openness, but there's also panic. Yes, um, there is I, still also a kind of uh, um, unsecured, instability in, in the country. I see. Yeah, thanks a lot. I, I can imagine. Um, Ms. Ms. Klaman, do you want to maybe comment from, from, from Poland on this? Mm, if we speak about uh, mm, how refugees uh, are seen by Polish people, mm, uh, we expected that uh, uh, when the school will uh, will uh, will start, so in in uh, September in Poland, there will be some problems and more problems because uh, uh, half of half of amount uh, uh, children are uh, in Polish schools are Ukrainian children, but uh, it ha it, it it didn't happen as much as we expect, and um, also because um, local government have. Uh, Quite big rights to do education in the local in in school in our um, communities. So uh, what we do, we um, uh, we against a little bit against the Ministry of Education, Charnek, who was who is, let's say, likely he's not big fan of integration. He's big fan to uh, to uh, to learn. Uh, Ukrainian ch uh, children, Polish literature and Polish history. Uh, so we do the we we do opposite. Uh, we uh, collect people. Uh, we uh, we don't divide uh, Polish and uh, Polish and Ukrainian children in school in classes. So they are together. And me personally, I, I also learn Polish Ukrainians, and uh, and I have their mothers with children, uh, and they say this is the great and the greatest things what what can happen, uh, because the children know each other and the parents also know each other. So uh, in this case, um, it it helps, but uh, we have some uh, research recently uh, from February this year that yes that's true that uh, the that um, that uh, uh, our very very hurrah uh, hurrah and very op uh, optimistic uh, um, uh, um, opti we, we were very optimistic now we are a little bit um, uh, scared also because about inflation uh, about uh, 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 about uh, that everything is very uh, very uh, uh, very expensive. Live in Poland is uh, more expensive, and uh, um, but it is not so bad. Uh, it, it isn't so bad. We are afraid uh, uh, for sure. The problem for Polish people is that. And that we can heard from the beginning also, not many, but some some opinions uh, that uh, the welfare uh, for uh, social welfare for refugees are very, uh, very high. Exactly. This is the, the same welfare like Polish people. So they get uh, 500 lotes for if they have children like Polish people and so on. Uh, and also uh, people uh, 
also um, uh, Ukrainian, not Ukrainian, but Polish people who host Ukrainians and local governors and uh, and some organization get 60 zlotters per day for a person to uh, uh, thanks to, uh, for accommodation and uh, eating. And uh, but uh, at, uh, and I think the government uh, see that, and they change the law now. So they they also change the law. They don't give that money as uh, for everybody because it was for everybody. Now that money they gives only people who are constantly in uh, in Poland from uh, one hundred and twenty days. You have to be in Poland. Uh, for this uh, this uh, this date that uh, 120 days um but uh, what what more so um, we uh, we can expect that it will growing and i'm very interested in what will happen during the elections because we have we we will have election parliamentary elections in uh, october uh, so uh, I hope it that issue didn't uh, will not uh, uh, will not uh, will not use by confederation the right wing party or 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 something one uh, like that also by law and justice I'm not sh- I I think not because um, the social uh, because it is not so not so bad with the public uh, opinion about the um, Ukraine refugees. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, and also just to just to mirror both what you mentioned earlier, the, the double standards, and also there's a question in the chat of um, um, the question of um, of how non-Ukrainian refugees are treated. So, but the double standard or the question of um, who should be entitled to get which kind of help or which standard of help, this is also unfortunately very acute in Germany, where this. Where, where not only from the very right wing, but also from politicians from the middle specter um, keep on raising this issue whenever it pleases them. Um, it's, it's sad to hear, um, to hear that, but maybe you could quickly um, exactly answer the question. So, so what about the non-Ukrainian refugees? Did they, do, do they also get any kind of this, of, of this help? Not so much. Not so much. In Poland, we have the special bill, uh, um, the special bill, the special special law, uh, what calls the uh, support for refugees from Ukrainian because of the war uh, commitment 24, uh, 24 February 2022. So this bill is only from Ukra- Ukrainian refugees. So for our perspective, uh, for local government perspective, for non-governmental perspective, we are very we put big pressure on government uh, to make that uh, to make the migrant policy equal. But they 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 don't want to do this. They do this only for uh, Ukrainian refugees now and uh, and uh, Yes, you can get uh, and uh, uh, any uh, and different people, def- different uh, migrants, maybe more migrants. We have we have we have no uh, as much refugees. Uh, yes, because uh, we we get more repatriation repatriations in people. Uh, so this is the different status. Uh, but about the refugees, we didn't get refugees. We didn't uh, take refugees uh, when was the um uh, the Syrian uh, refugees yes uh, a few years ago when the Greece was the Lampedusa was uh, that issue was we didn't get any refugee we didn't t- take uh, uh, our government say no to uh, to take refugees uh, from Africa exactly so um so uh, also that differences uh, is maybe um, it is more about the Syrian people, yes? Because in Poland we have also from people from Syrian. We we our local uh, our mayor help uh, one family in the wood uh, next to the Belarusian border, Be- Be- Belarusian Polish border, and we got we uh, we uh, our city council support 
this family. We have no money from the government to help them. And they have no equal rights. They have almost no, 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 uh, no rights. Exactly. So it happened. Yeah, um, it's a it's a sad observation indeed. But as I as I said, I mean maybe not to this extent, but also there's there's um, similar at least discussions and double standards in Germany and I think in many other European countries. Unfortunately, um, with re looking at the time, um, unfortunately, I think we already have to somehow come to an end. And I would like to close with asking the two of you um, about the perspective to the rest of Europe, looking, well, we've listened to the East, so what, what do you want to tell us looking, looking westwards from, from your perspective? Um, do you have any concrete asks, concrete um, topics or points that you would like to place here in this audience where maybe not only governance but also civil society because I think tonight it's mostly civil society representatives or private just interested private um, people from from Germany and other countries that join this discussion um, what would you like to to well to tell the audience and to ask from us um, to help you in all your endeavors um, maybe now again we start with you, Ms. Kalman, and then we'll end with Ms. Bullet. Uh, okay, so um, first thing, I, I, uh, I think we were very afraid about the second uh, wave of uh, refugees in Poland, because I think we are not prepared to the same uh, wave uh, uh, refugees from Ukrainian. Uh, so this is my my ask to you to to prepare i hope i hope so we cannot we don't have to do this but because the war now is getting quite good for for ukrainian for for uh, for for our luck and for them luck uh, but uh, this is my ask to to be prepared that all europe should be prepared more more countries more western countries should be prepared to uh, to take refugees, because uh, I think Poland is not uh, not prepared to uh, not system. Uh, we 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 have some you know some buildings, vacancy buildings we can use for the apartment for for uh, for uh, for refugees, but our government do nothing in this. So for sure, this is the first one to be to be prepared and to welcome them. Uh, to take that that responsible to to share it more uh, maybe and second one it is especially to NGOs and to uh, to uh, um, to organization uh, to international organization is to watch on how to say on hands of our government exactly uh, to to be equal and to to be equal for every refugees and to not use refugees as a politician uh, political how to say um, weapon like a scape like a scapegoat yes 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 so this and also what we will be very very thankful uh, to i i say that from uh, to being the local government uh, uh, as a, a councillor uh, that we need your uh, your experience and your uh, your uh, migrant policy uh, uh, and also the the long term migrant policy. We need that experience. We need that uh, that uh, that practice, uh, and so on. So this this is this for sure. Thank you so much. Um, quite um, quite spot on, Miss Bulland. How about you? Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, to add the information that Moldova is not a destination country for the many refugees, because we are not a EU country, and uh, we uh, the the 
living standards here in Moldova are quite low, and also the incomes are quite low. So we have the smallest uh, overage salary, and we have this one of the smallest pensions, which are people are getting here. So we don't have, as a whole, uh, Moldova don't have, don't didn't face so much uh, refugees here. So we didn't have experience with so many refugees here in Moldova. It just happened uh, because of the war in the neighboring country in Ukraine. And um, uh, only thanks to the international support or support of international organization which coming to Moldova, we could uh, manage the, the crisis of the refugees here in Moldova. We, um, uh, our local government mobilized all the resources. So there were centers which were organized in the schools, in the gyms, in the uh, many public places in the first uh, two months. Uh, so in March last year, there was every, every third person in Moldova was Ukrainian. Uh, every fifth uh, children in Moldova was Ukrainian. So it was a huge inflow. So only due to support of our partners, uh, donational support from our partners, we could uh, really manage and uh, provide the uh, necessary support for the refugees here in Moldova. Well, what to wish? We wish the war to end and we wish more transparency in organizing all the decisions uh, and uh, support uh, here in Moldova. Thank you a lot for your attention. Thanks a lot. Um, again, looking at the time, we're 20 minutes beyond, um, and there's so much we could we could still well dive into much deeper. Um, however, I think we filled this time with lots of information, with with lots of well parallel, but also you could also already feel the, the also the differences between the con the two contexts that you that you guided us through. Thank you so much, both of our speakers. Um, keep up the good work. Um, at least I I wrote down what you what you just mentioned in the. Um, um, in the end, both of you, and we will we will see also from the organizers' organizations um, how we can maybe support in our little role and multiply. And this goes off, of course, to all the participants tonight. Be um, multipliers of of these messages from the east, um, and exactly. Let's let's all keep in touch. Let's all keep up uh, the the spirit, the positive spirit that. We could feel from coming from both of you. Very many thanks, and well, to all of you, to the two of you, but also to to all participants. Have a lovely evening, and please do join the future events of this series, listening to these, because there's much to learn as we so obviously um, saw tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.